What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's take a few minutes and talk about Scandal Season 7, Episode 3. All right, guys, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Like, I really don't care for Fitz outside of Olivia. So I did. I watched the episode, and, you know, like I said, I had a death in my family last week, so I didn't have time to make the video. I just wanted to do, you know, a little quick review to talk about what happened on the show. Basically, so, this whole episode is about Fitz and his adjustment to life after living in the White House. We see him wake up. We see him start a routine, trying to learn how to be a normal person person again. What I was not believable to me was that when he went in the store he didn't know that he had to activate his car before he can use it and I know that eight years prior to him being the president that he has had a card to activate before. Even rich people gotta activate their credit cards. Okay? That was a little unbelievable but we get it. He's trying to adjust to being a regular person. He wants to drive. When he comes down in the morning he fires everybody who works for him because he wants to do things for himself. So we find out that uh, Marcus has bought some land for the library that they're going to create. The first 15, 20 minutes of the episode, you know, they're all looking about what's going to be in the future and this beautiful library that they're going to create. All of that stuff. It's great for like the first 15 minutes, him and Marcus are getting along famously. They're going to add a wing for the civil rights movement in the 21st century in the library. And Marcus goes on later on in the episode. Marcus asks him, how is he going to memorialize Olivia? Is she going to have her own wing? Is she just going to have, you know, a little space or what's it going to be? And he goes into why. Because basically Olivia was the president. He didn't do anything without asking Olivia. Even if he didn't want to do what Olivia said, he ended up doing what Olivia said anyway because Olivia was always right. The majority of the time, she was always right. And if she was wrong, eventually she was right. So how are you going to memorialize her? You going to put her up in the office, you put her, give her her own wing, and they go back and forth in a conversation. Now, now Fitz is getting into the second stage, which is the I'm the shit and I can do this. We saw that didn't work out for him. What was that, season three or four? When he decided that he was going to do everything for himself, that ain't work out then. So a damn show ain't going to work now. Fitz tells Marcus that Olivia's going to get the same amount of space that Cyrus gets in the, the library. So Marcus is like, okay, whatever you say. And Marcus uh, goes with him to a party later on, and the senator says something to him in another language. Oh, he said he called me a mi amigo um, Nino. He called him a boy. And we know that when an old white man called a young black man a boy, we know that connotation. And Fitz seems to take issue with any time Marcus says he counts the number of black people or things that are normal for black people to do. This doesn't really take the time to get to know Marcus. He doesn't really, yeah, ask him any questions about himself or how he grew up. But he just makes assumptions based off of his own life experience and not Marcus's life experience. So he cannot put himself in the shoes of another person. So kind of Fitz is giving us an example of what white privilege is, white privilege is having to choose not to deal with certain things. Um, there's a young man on the show, he's trying to get them to take down a, a, a memorial from an old war hero because he was a cruel slave owner. And you know, kind of bringing those current topics into the show. And at first, Fitz is watching on the news, and he's really like, ah, he kind of dismisses it. Marcus is like, well, you know, we can really make an impact because that was in their town. We can go out there. And he's like, no, we're not going to go out there. You know, it's too divisive. This issue is this, that, and the other. So eventually, this all comes to a head because Marcus, him, and another man are sitting out talking. Fitz makes a quip about Marcus going fetch them some liquor. And Marcus is like, no, nah, you can get it yourself. Since you like doing things for yourself so much. Because Fitz went on this big old rampage early in the episode about being able to do things for himself. And he was so tired of being catered to. But then in this moment, you want somebody to jump up and get your ass some whiskey. After that night was over with, Fitz comes up there. What's your problem? He like, listen, you're not going to talk to me like I'm a dog. You telling me to jump up and go get you some damn whiskey. And he like, listen, you are my employee and you will behave. And he said he was fired. That's what it was. And Marcus was like, I've been wanting to say this my whole life, bitch, I quit. And he's like, well, you're my employee and you're going to behave? Behave? Like, oh, I guess I said the wrong thing. Da, 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 da. And Fitz is an asshole, basically. Like, I'm, I'm over it at this point. And then when Marcus read him fulfilled, this was my top number one moment of the show. When Marcus read his ass fulfilled and told him how he was doing Olivia and he was reducing to her to a home wrecking hoe and we we all know Olivia might have been a hoe. Okay, she might have been a little bit of a hoe. You shouldn't be sleeping with nobody's husband, but girl, but we already know. 
Olivia ran that damn White House. He could not make a move without Olivia. And now you just gonna reduce her to communications director and y'all done had this wild affair and she was the first, first girlfriend and she, all of this stuff, you gonna really, that's what you gonna do, Fitz? He was like, you a bitch ass nigga. Basically, that's what he told him and he was like, you a coward because Fitz tell him you want power. If you want to be an activist, you will be out there being an activist. You really want power. Mark is like, um, where I'm from, you gotta back that shit up. You calling me a coward. So Fitz gonna wait till he turn around to call him a coward and then when Marcus turn around, he sucker punched him. I was like, really? But Marcus tagged that ass, and Marcus was gonna beat that ass, okay? Till, till Secret Service came in there and wrestled them out apart from each other. Marcus was finna tear that ass up, okay? So Fitz, I was busted up. You know, he was all scratched up, whatever. And then we come to Papa Pope. Child, Papa Pope be putting 20 on 10. Now listen, last week, Olivia could have killed that man if she wanted to and been done with it and went on back to her business. But she did not. So when Fitz, when he told Fitz she running B613 and he was like, oh, you know, she running different, she is running different. Now, I'm not saying she ain't gonna do no shady stuff. She will do some ruthless shady stuff. No more ruthless than what Papa Pope did. Probably a lot less ruthless than what Papa Pope did. So if she was evil down to the core and he was losing her and she was lost, she would have killed that man last week and not even thought about it. So all of this extra he doing is, for me, it lets me know that he he just want Olivia not to be in power and for him to have that power back because he know Fitz is a dummy. He know Fitz is a dummy and if he go out there and say, hey Fitz, I need you, I really need you, he's gonna go to Liv. Liv gonna get the off because we all know that Fitz is her weakness. He gonna try to get power of B613 back. I'm so tired of this storyline. Like, I am over it. Like, I really hope that Shana has something else to store for us, y'all. Because, see, I've accepted that scandal has changed, but I am so tired of this B613 storyline and Papa Pope. Like, he need to be gone. I'm sorry. After that whole episode with him and the ex-girlfriend and all of that, he should have been gone out of the story. We should be done with Papa Pope at this point. But we're not, and he's back, and Fitz goes back, and there's Olivia. <sighs> and, that, and that was that. So, I mean, it was an okay episode. Like, if it wasn't for Marcus, I probably wouldn't have watched it at all. The little phone call between Marcus and Millie was cute. I really don't see it for them. But like I told y'all, I don't think she's going to be screwing President or by Shrine because that's just too much, you know, in the way of foreign policy. But she probably going to give Marcus some cutty when he come on down. I would. Why wouldn't you, girl? That's your old boo thing. You ain't got to add to your numbers. You already know you're going to get your back blown out. So, I mean, it's a win-win for everybody. We'll see what happens. So, that's all I got for Scandal, guys. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe um next week my videos or this week excuse me my videos are going to be sort of delayed because i have to go attend you know the services for my family member on friday so i probably won't be making videos till the weekend so just holla at your girl next week peace